This is actually one of the very, very few properly illuminated manuscripts uh, in the in the Geniza. Mm -hmm. And we only have, I think we only have this page and maybe another page. So people obviously tore out these images for some reason and then they ended up in the Geniza in one of those mysteries of deposition uh, of, of the Geniza. So this is the lioness and her cup. And it's from the circle of, sort of the cycle of stories called Kalila Badimna. Um, so the the, the king is actually, the lion is actually the king. He looks like a cup, but he's actually the king. And his mother gives him advice about um, uh, who is, you know, who, who sort of gives you good advice and who gives you bad advice. And these stories are extremely interesting because originally they were all written up in India. And from India they traveled to Persia. And then from Persia they were translated into Arabic as part of this um, translation movement that took place in the Abbasid Empire. The Abbasids were very keen on gathering all the knowledge in the world in Arabic. So they had these massive translation schools where they would employ dozens and dozens of especially Christians, Muslims and Zoroastrians to translate all this old knowledge. They would buy books from Byzantium, Greek books, the old classical Greek knowledge that wasn't really appreciated in Europe at the time because Europe was very Christian. This was sort of pagan, pre-Christian knowledge. People in Europe weren't really sure that these were books that you should handle. Um, and at that time, the Abbasids basically bought those books and translated them all into Arabic in an effort to really gather all knowledge that there was in the world. And while they were doing this and gathering all this knowledge, they were also translating these stories basically from India and from Persia. And they became part of um, folklore. And of course, nowadays we call these stories Arabian Nights, right? So actually there's a whole transmission history. You can see how the whole of Eurasia basically belongs together in this, in this transmission of, of these fairy tales. They were actually the ones who preserved that sort of knowledge. I mean, you don't know how much of that is propaganda. They talk about it, how oh, we rescued those, book, those yeah. books and we translated <laughs> them. And you don't know how much of that is true. But they, they did, I mean, a lot of these things are only ever preserved now in Arabic. They have been completely lost in, in Greek and they're only ever preserved now in Arabic. And then they were subsequently translated back from Arabic into Greek, which yeah. is um, quite interesting.